She don't use cheese. She don't use jelly or any of these cheese. Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity, uh, lesson 15. So uh, in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to get our inputs and outputs all set up for our particular nodes over here. All right. And so to do that, uh, what we need to do is go back to our um, node base. And we actually want to include a couple of subclasses. So I'm going to create a new region here. And we're going to say subclasses and say end region, like so. And um, I want to declare a couple new classes. So I'm going to say public class. <clears throat> and we're going to call this a GT node input. Now you could totally put these in their own scripts um, as well. Um, but in this case, I like to kind of keep it all organized and, and together. So that way I know all the uh, classes that pertain to the nodes uh, themselves and the construction of nodes and the way they work, they all live in this base basically. So I'm going to say public class uh, GT node output. All right, because every node has an input and every node has an output. All right, well, I actually, I lied. Not every node has an input, but every node will have an output of some sort, okay? So for our node input and our output, we both want these guys to keep track of whether or not uh, they're occupied or not. So we're going to say bool is occupied. And that just allows um, easy access to understand if it is in fact connected or not to something. So we'll say public bool uh, is occupied uh, equals false right off the bat. And then inside of our input, basically, we want to keep track of which node has been input into this particular node that has this particular input. So I'm going to create public GT node base, right? And we're going to say input node. So this will keep track of the node that has been input into our particular node that we're working on. So I also need to make sure that these guys are serializable, so they actually saved disk. All right, so we don't lose our data and all of our connections. All right, so at that point, now what we can do, now that we have these, um, these input and output classes, I can actually go into my float node, and when I go to... Um, construct this or to init the node itself, I can actually add in um, some new input. So instead of actually doing it inside of this initialization, I, I want it to happen on creation. So I'm actually going to include a constructor for this. So I'm going to say region constructor. We'll say end region. All right. And so we just need to do public GT float node and uh, we need to pass in some parameters if we really need to. All right. And so this, these constructors are, are uh, specific to their particular node type. So a float is going to have um, no inputs and just an output. It's a constant value. So uh, it doesn't need an input. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to say, um, let's actually make a variable to hold it. So we're going to say um, public uh, GT node output. Is called output. All right. So then output is going to equal to a new GT node output. Simple as that. So now we have an output on our particular node. All right. So let me jump back into Unity over here. And that will update the actual classes themselves, but uh, we don't actually see any sort of representation um, of this particular. Um, output on these float nodes, right? We need to have some sort of way to visualize where the output node is. And we also need to be able to click it and then move and draw a line between uh, its output and some other input on some other node. Okay, so you notice that each node now has an output attached to it. All right, it's very good. All right, so what we want to do is actually draw a little button. So we can actually take care of that first hand. So uh, let's come down into our update node uh, GUI. And so after we uh, run the base update node GUI, right, which draws just the basic rectangle or the box or the, the, the custom GUI that we're using, uh, what I want to do is I want to draw where that button goes for the output. <clears throat> All right. And so what I want to do is um, I'm going to say if 
uh, GUI dot button, say GUI dot button, all right, is equal to, or we also need to put in a rect rectangle for this. So what we want to do is we want to say new rect because we want to find a good position for this. And really, we want that to be right over here. You know, most node editors have the, the output over here. All right, so they float left to right. All right, and that's how this one's going to work. How about that? So I'm going to say uh, node rect dot x um, plus node rect dot width, right? Because we want to go from our x position, we want to add on the width, and then we want to go down a little bit. All right, so that's where we want to go now. So now that was the x position. So now we want to do uh, node rect dot y plus our node rect dot height times 0 0.5. It's a good, good place to start right there, okay? And then we want to decide on the height and the width of our actual input outputs. And I've decided on a value of 24 by 24 for these guys. All right, so there's our, our rectangle for our output. And we don't need any sort of string for or title or anything for our button, so we'll just leave that empty for now. All right. And it looks like I'm missing one, so we just need to do that. Very good. So if that happens, then let's debug.log. Uh, clicked output. So let's see what we get with this. All right, so now we have a little button down there. All right, and we can click it, and we click the output, and it moves around with the node itself. Everything is perfect. So now what we need to do is we actually need to move it up a little bit so it's right in the center, or at least I think it should be right in the center. You guys can leave it wherever you want, basically. And that just means that I need to subtract half of our, our height from our um, Y position, so minus 12F. And that should push it up just perfectly right there. Nice. All right. Very, very good. All right, so we click that output. Everything's working. All righty. <clears throat> so let's go in and uh, let's come up with a style for these because I believe we are still getting our view skin, so I can actually um, give it a style. So inside of Photoshop, what I'm going to do is create another new 64 by 64 texture over here. And uh, I'm going to create another rounded rectangle. It has the same sort or the same radius for the actual um, uh, the corners over here. Uh, but what I, I do want to do is I want to um, first, let me just select this here. I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit like so. All right. And I'm just going to put a uh, white outline over it for now. So let's... Get a white, and I'm just gonna do a stroke of let's do two pixels on the inside. That's pretty good. I like that. All right, so you notice that now we've got the input um, look to it. So basically, it's just a rounded rectangle where the one side of it is just cut off, and we have the actual radius uh, corners on the right hand side over here. So that is all perfect. So what I can do is I can collapse that and we'll save it into here. So we're gonna say node output normal. Very good. All right, so then let's get that all worked up. So I'm gonna come into Unity over here and go to my editor skin. All right, and I'm going to set up a new style. So what I'm gonna do is go to my custom styles add a new style here, and uh, I'm going to, there's not gonna be any fonts or anything like that. And for our normal, I'm going to give it that node output normal, and it's gonna be the same for all of these guys, so node output, output normal for now. You're more than welcome to put a hover state to it if you want. All right, and the border should be fine. That's why I'm using the, the same um, 64 by 64 for all my textures, that way I don't have to worry about the border. Uh, so everything should be good to go here. That's all right, so now all we need to do is actually assign a new name to this, so it's gonna be a node output, there we go. And we'll copy that, so then we'll go back to our code over here. 
and I can just give it that new style. So I'm going to say view skin dot get style. There we go. Node output. Perfect. And with that, you'll notice now we have a node. And it lo it's looking like it's getting a little munged up there. So let's go um, into the texture itself. So we need to set the, the type first. Set that appropriately. And there we go. Perfect. So now we have a nice output for our particular node. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the add node because we, in the next lesson, we're going to go and learn how to actually create connections between all these guys, all right? And so we need another node type to connect to because the float node doesn't have any input, but we're going to create an add node that's going to take the values of two float nodes and pump them into a single add node where it will calculate the sum of the two floats, all right? So let's go into the nodes and launch our add node. And this will go relatively quickly because we've already done the float node. And so I can just literally copy and paste um, a lot of the code here. And that is another reason to really start getting into um, creating these uh, classes that inherit from base classes. Uh, it just really makes the process go much faster uh, when developing your code. <clears throat> I don't really think anybody, anyone would argue with me there. So, um, yep, we're going to just copy all this. I'm just going to copy this straight up, and then we can remove anything we don't need. All right, so let's go through, and this is going to be an add node, like so. Very good. And uh, we're going to do a public float node value, or we're going to say node sum. How about that? And we're going to create two out or two inputs. So we're going to say public uh, GT input or node input. Call this input A. And we're going to create another public GT node input. And call this input B. All right. And so. We want to create an output, so that's fine. But we also want to create two inputs. So I'm going to say input A in my constructor. I'm going to say new GT input, and input B is equal to a new node input as well. So now we have those guys set up. Um, I just want to make sure I'm setting it to the right type. So we're going to do an add node. And then I'm going to make this guy a little bit uh, wider. So there's going to be 200F instead. And yep, that's all fine. So the only other thing that we need to get set up are our two outputs, or two inputs, excuse me. So this is going to be output. This is going to be uh, input A, like so. This is going to be input B. All right. OK, so what, all we need to do now is set up the rectangles for our um, particular um, inputs and outputs. All right, for our buttons. Um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to come into input A over here. And um, because these guys are going to be on the other side, we don't necessarily need to subtract the width from these. All right, so I need to actually subtract the um, this particular width over here. All right, so I want to subtract uh, 24 because I want to move it that same amount on the other side over here. All right, so that's good for there. And now what I want to do is I want to um, remove this stuff. So I'm going to say node rec y plus the height times, well, we can actually start with some of this stuff. Let's just start with these values and see what we get. So again, I'm going to just copy this off. It's always a good, good way to go. Um, whoops, let's do that. And uh, literally what we're going to need is another um, uh, GUI style. So I'm going to come into Photoshop and just um, flip this guy so it becomes our our input. So let's save this now. PNG is going to be uh, node input normal. Very good. Come back into Unity and let's get that texture set up appropriately. So we're going to do the node input and we'll set that to GUI, 64 color, like so. 
And then in our editor skin, let's set up that input. So I'm going to create another style over here. It's going to be called node input. Like so. And let's just change out the texture that it's using. All right. So node input and node input. There we go. Perfect. That should be all that we need to do. So I can change uh, the GUI style just to node input. All right, so we'll do that there. We'll do that there. And uh, all I need to do now is actually get the creation of the add node working. So I'm going to have to bring back up my um, utilities over here. So we're going to go to the GT node utils. And we're going to go to our uh, work view. All right, and down here, we're going to create a new call to create a new add node. All right, so we're going to do curve graph node type add. Perfect. So that's going to jump into the node utils. We're going to come down to our node creation method that we have. And we're just going to add one more to this particular switch statement. So add. And we're going to make this a GT add node. Copy that, copy that. And we'll just change out the, the name. So add node. All right, and the rest of it should be good to go. All right, so let's uh, test that out. Now we should get an add node in our graph over here. So if I right click and say add node, there we go. Now we have an add node. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at ways to connect these, but I do need to fix up my um, inputs a little bit over here. All right, and yeah. So I just need to move one up and one down a little bit so I have the two inputs over here. All right. <clears throat> so let's do that really quickly. So add node. So now what I want to do is, uh, this is my input A right here. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do node rect dot y times height times 0.33 times 2f, I believe minus 8f. And no, I'm not doing this on the fly. I do have um, my cheat sheet right next to me. So I'm just trying to read all that. All right, so then we're going to do this guy. Like so, we're going to say node rect plus 0 0.5 times, not times, well, we're going to remove 8 or 12 this time. All right. So let's take a look at that. See what we get. We got one of them to move down. <clears throat> oh, these both need to be 0.33. And this is going to be 14. Oh, and I totally messed that up. So this one's going to be up here. Excuse me for a second. There we go. All right, so that should be good enough. There we go. Perfect. So now we have two inputs. We have a single output for our add node. And we have our float nodes with our single uh, output. So now we can start to look at how we connect these nodes together and actually compute their, their graph. All right. Thanks so much. Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity, lesson 16. So we're actually going to get our nodes all connecting now. Um, inside of our editor over here. So the first step to doing that is to detect when we click on an output and to draw a line to the mouse, right? 
So uh, when the user actually clicks one of these guys, we want to draw a line to wherever the mouse is so the user knows that they're in some sort of connection mode. All right. Uh, so let's get that started. So to, to do that, what we need to do is the graph needs to have some sort of concept of being in that connection mode. So uh, what I'm going to do is create two new variables now. I'm going to say public bool um, once connection. So we're going to use that flag to know if the editor wants to make some sort of connection. And then we also want to store the current output or the current node that we just clicked um, in a um, node. So we're going to say GT node base. Um, uh, we're going to call it the connection node. All right. So we need to keep some sort of reference to the node that we want to input into another node. OK? So what we can do here is uh, inside of our uh, float node, all right, when we actually click the output, we can select, first we want to check to see if the parent graph is not null, all right, so that's always important, just in case. All right, so if it's not null, then we want to say the parent graph dot once connection is equal to true. And we also want to say that the uh, parent graph dot connection node is equal to this, because this is the node that we just clicked, and this is the node we want to connect to another node. So we want to store this reference. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to say um, over in our graph over here, in our node graph. <clears throat> so if we, we are already detecting if we don't actually click on anything. All right. So if we haven't sent the node over here, we're just going to set uh, the once connection to false. All right. So I'll just clean things up for us. And so basically, um, all we need to do now is to uh, detect in the update. So for when we're updating the graph here, um, after we do all this stuff, so let's look for connection mode. All right, so we're going to say if we want a connection. All right, so if the editor or if this graph wants to make some sort of connection, and we want to make sure that the uh, connection node does not equal null. All right, so that's very important as well. Then let's actually uh, draw our connection to mouse. Draw a connection to mouse. And we'll send in the current mouse position. So I'm going to send in e.mouseposition. All right, so I'm going to refactor that into a method, put it down into our utilities over here. All right, so once we do that, all we need to do really is uh, draw a connection, a line, basically, from our current um, connection node to the mouse position. So the way we do this, we utilize the handles inside of Unity. So I'm going to say handles.begin, uh, whoops, dot begin GUI. And anytime you do that, we want to close it. So handles.end GUI, like so. All right, so then we say handles.color is equal to color.white. All right, and then we want to draw a line. So we say handles dot draw line. As simple as that. And you'll notice that it's taking uh, two vectors. So we need to create a new vector three, and we want to send in the uh, connection node. Is that? Let's see. Yeah, it's connection node. <clears throat> and we could actually store that in. Well, no, that'd be fine. So we'll say connection node. It's weird that it's not popping up. Connection node dot node rect uh, dot x plus the width. All right. Uh, it's weird. Node rect dot width. All right. And we will do connection node dot node rect dot y plus co connection node dot height. Height times 0 0.5. That way it's right in the middle. And then for the z input, we just put a value of 0 because we have no z depth in this. All right. So then at that point, we also just need to put in the mouse position. So we'll just say a new vector 3 of uh, mouse position.x and mouse position.y and 0f. And we need one more 
bracket there. All right, so that's good. So that should actually get everything um, up and rolling for us. So let's go test it out. All right, there we go. So now we're drawing a line between our nodes. But you'll notice that if I were to click on a node, it doesn't go away. And actually, that's not a bad uh, workflow, right? Because you don't want it to go away if you actually hit it. You just want to be able to tell the users just hit these um, inputs over here. But if they don't click on anything, then it goes away. So that's going to work for us for right now. And I actually want to push it out the width of our, um, our input, our output there. So uh, really, that's just going to be the uh, width. Well, we can just add on 24, because that is the width of our uh, outputs there. There we go. Perfect. So that'll work out just dandy. So now what I need to do is get the add node to, to work, because you can see that it's not causing anything. So I need to go into the add node over here and inside of the um, output, I just need to put in that same code that I have for the the float node. So, because I want to throw the graph into that connection node. All right. The other thing that we want to do, make sure that we're doing, is um, taking that connection node and making it false or null. Sorry. Perfect. All right. So let's t test out the add node now. If we click, there we go. Perfect. And we can also test out the graph. So we can take a look at the graph and watch the connection node. It should be populated with our float node, populated with our add node. Perfect. That is exactly what we're looking for. All right, so now what we want to do is give it to the input of another node. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the add nodes, its inputs over here, all right, and we're just going to make sure that we do in fact have the graph first. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these guys over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if uh, parent graph not equal no, all right, then what I want to do is I want to say um, the input A, so I got these guys all mixed up here. Just need to fix that. So input A dot um, input node is equal to the parent graph dot connection node. Just like that. So then we can also then check, we'll say input um, Input A dot is occupied is equal to input A uh, dot input node does not equal null. Then we can return true or we're going to return false. All right, so we use the fancy if then. And then we just need to tell the parent graph. Oops, I forgot the question mark. There we go. Then we can tell the parent graph uh, to go out of connection mode equals false and parent graph dot connection node equals null because we made the connection. All right, and we also want to make sure that our output, our current output on the input node is set to is occupied also. So we're going to say um, input a dot input node dot output. How did I not expose that? So let's see in the float node here. Oh, it's because it's not in the base. So uh, we shouldn't, we don't really need to worry about that just for now. All right, so then what I want to do is actually copy this over, over here. Very good. And we'll just set it to input B instead. There we go. And that basically gets all of that working. So what we can do is we can actually test this out um, just from a data standpoint. All right, so. Um, I'm going to take a look at our add node here. So we have our input and our outputs, all right, for our add node. So I want to check to see if um, this all works. So I'm going to click and then click. And in fact, it did not work. 
Let's see, try that one more time. So it is not populating it with the appropriate uh, things, unfortunately. So let's just see if I get, let's debug this for a second. So I'm gonna look to see if I'm actually getting something. So we'll say clicked, input A. Yep, so I clicked input A. So let's check it right here. It's a good place to see. Maybe uh, the parent graph is null at this point. So let's clear out the console here. Nope. All right, so we do have the parent graph. All right. It's weird that it's not actually assigning it. And I think I know why. So if I go back to the graph, um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, if not set node. So let's actually get rid of this here for a second. All right, well, let's check this. I think I'm clearing it out because I'm clicking off of a node. I'm not in the nodes rect area. Yep, so that, that was the reason. So now I'm populating those. So now we could draw those lines. But now we need to figure out a different way um, to um, access those things. And I think what we can do is actually just, yeah. So what we can do is we can actually just put if once connection, we'll just set it back to false. So we'll say uh, once connection equals false. Yeah, there we go. I don't think we need to actually set anything to null. Actually, no, oh, no, let's test this out. So that should work. So I'm actually gonna reset my data here inside of my scriptable object. It's a nice way of testing these things out. So we're just still drawing it and there we go. Now it's working. Okay, so we're all good to go. All right, so all I need to do now is actually draw the lines um, between um, our nodes. All right, so I'm gonna go to the add node and they, this is gonna be responsible for uh, drawing the, the lines between its inputs to the input node. So we're gonna say uh, draw input lines like so. If I could type, there we go. And we don't need any arguments for that. All right, and so what I wanna do is I'm going to um, do this. I'm going to do handles dot uh, begin GUI. Then we're going to do handles dot end GUI. All right, and we'll set the handles color. So I'll we'll say handles dot color dot cone cap. We'll say handles dot color equals color dot white. And then all we really need to do is say handles dot draw a line between a new vector three, just like we did for the other, for the graph line. So we say input, input a dot node rect, or input node dot node rect, there we go, dot x plus it's width plus 24 for the width, the uh, actual input. Dot width plus 24 F, that's good. Then we're gonna do input A dot uh, input node dot node rect, same stuff, Y plus, so let's just copy this off again and put this over here, like so. Dot height times 0.5 F and zero for the Z value. And then we'll do a new vector three for node, node rect dot X minus 24 F. 
And these are all values that you can, you know, set in your, on your own um, for your own nodes. Um, obviously, I've got these all writ written down just to make the video go just a little bit faster. Uh, that way I'm not having to um, figure out my own values while you guys are watching me because that would not be very much fun. 0.33F. So that's good. And we'll put a 0F and close that out. Perfect. All right. So what we really want to do is um, actually extract this out into a separate method. So we don't have to type all that stuff again. So I'm going to extract that out into a different method and we'll say uh, draw a line for that. Hit enter. And really the only thing that we actually need in here, let me get those things separated all out again. Really the only things that we, we need is the input node because we already get the node wrecked for this. So that's fine. So I just need the particular input node. So all we really need to do is just say dt uh, node uh, input, we'll say cur input. All right, there we go. All right. And so, um, yeah, we'll say if uh, input a dot is occupied, then we'll draw a line to input a. We'll go to end like so. And we'll do the same thing for input B. So if input B dot is occupied, then we'll draw a line to input B. And we'll input input A here. Like so. So now all I gotta do is replace these guys here. like so, and that should be good to go. So now all, all I have to do is just um, call this at the very bottom of my update GUI. There we go. And we'll see how that works. And oh, well, we got some nice errors to go through here. Is complaining about the fact that we are doing something a little weird here. So let's clean this up a little bit. Direct, direct. All right, what is it saying? We can't add operands of type unity rect and float. Ah, there it is. Dot y. There we go. And there you go. And unfortunately, we're getting it drawing to the same line, even though it should be drawing to input B over there. So let's just take a look one more time. So I'm drawing line input B, input B. And that is because we actually need to update our values up here. So I'm going to put in an int or a float. So we need to move it down. <clears throat> so we're going to say float um, input ID. How about that? So this one's going to be one F, and this one's going to be two F. So basically, we want to multiply this by the input ID. All right, that should be good. Let's try that out. There we go. Perfect. Now we have them connecting to the nodes. So I could actually replace these guys. There we go. And that is how we make uh, the node connections inside of our node editor. So we are almost done here. All we really need to do is actually uh, delete nodes. Uh, we need to display node properties over in the property view. And we need to get these guys actually calculating. We need to get the add node actually calculating its sum. All right, so we'll do that in the next few lessons. Thanks so much.